I don't think I like the bag enough to add it to my collection in lizard or alligator. Hi guys, my name is GPS and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought that I would share with you a few luxury pieces that I have on my 2020 wish list that I would love to add to my collection in the near future. And I cannot believe how fast this year is going by. We're pretty much six months into the year and I'm only just getting around to sharing with you guys the pieces that I have my eyes on. But at least we still have a little bit of time so we'll see what pieces I'll be able to add to my collection and share with you guys in future unboxings. But if you would like to see what luxury pieces I've be excited to expand my collection with that please keep on watching. The first piece is actually one that I've had my eye on for quite a while. I was actually going to pick it up right before we were asked to stay at home so it's something that I have been waiting on for quite a while and it's the Advantage or Montage sneakers from Hermes. I'm sure I'm butchering it but it's this really cool pair of shoes from Hermes that I absolutely love. The blue ones are one of my favorites and I'm planning on picking them up in orange because I really like the shape and the design from Hermes. Their designers, I guess maybe Pierre Hardy, have the tendency to go a little bit overboard when it comes to their men's shoes. They sometimes want to prove a little bit too badly that they can be youthful and futuristic and forward looking. And their shoes sometimes can come off a little bit odd, but I think they did an incredible job with this pair of sneakers. They are very streamlined, elegant, but quite casual at the same time. You can pretty much wear them with any outfit Fit, and they look really flattering on everyone that I have seen them on. And an interesting detail is the stripe design that the shoes feature, which is actually inspired by the etching on the Hermes locks that you get with your Kellys, your Birkins, and all the bags that come with a lock from Hermes, which I think is a really cool little inspiration and detail that I personally really appreciate. It actually reminds me, and I know quite a few people out there, of the Stan Smith sneakers from Adidas which is actually one of my favorite pair of sneakers. I find that they are extremely flattering and easy to wear. So I really like that Hermes perhaps took inspiration from Adidas and they made a Stan Smith design just a little bit more streamlined and elevated. So I'm really excited to add the orange pair to my collection, hopefully sooner rather than later. The second item which I would love to go and see in person because I'm not quite sure how it would fit into my collection is actually a piece from Louis Vuitton from their travel accessories range and it's the Nice or Nice BB vanity case which I actually would not use to store my cosmetics or my toiletries when I'm traveling. I would actually like to wear it as an actual bag for traveling. So I really want to go and have a look at it in person because it's a vanity case that comes in a couple of different sizes. I think right now it's available in three sizes and I've been hearing rumors that there's also a mini version coming out in the near future. I'm going between the BB and the regular vanity case size, but the price difference is huge. I think the BB one is around $1,200, whereas the regular size is almost $3,000, which I kind of understand because there is a huge difference between the two. The regular version comes with a shoulder strap and it's much larger, whereas the BB one is much more simplistic and I assume much smaller, but I've never really had a chance to look at them in person, so it's definitely something that I have to go and have a look at. And the reason why I'm thinking about picking it up is because it's actually a bag that I would prefer to use for traveling. I would use it to store maybe a mini Kelly inside, my passport, my travel documents, some toiletries, and all my in-flight essentials. So it's not a piece that I would use hidden away in a suitcase. I would much rather use it as my actual travel bag that I carry with me. So as soon as stores open up, assuming they'll have some things in stock, I'll go and have a look at them. It's not really a priority for me at this stage because it's not like I'll be traveling anytime soon. And since we are on the topic of traveling, there is actually another piece that I would love to add to my travel collection specifically. I haven't bought it yet just simply because I haven't had a chance to travel anywhere, but as soon as I do, I think it will be something that I purchase. And it's actually not really a luxury item, but I thought I would include it in here because maybe some of you guys have some experience with this brand and I would love to hear your feedback and your experience with this company. And it's actually from the brand Bay Travel, which I believe is owned by Shane Mitchell. It's her travel company that makes suitcases and travel essentials. And they have this really cool vanity case out, which is I believe called the On The Go Essential Case. And I'm pretty sure that it's inspired by the Anya Hendrick. I think that's the original brand name, the Anya Hendrick uh, travel case 
which is extremely, extremely similar to Shane Mitchell's one. And it's this very simplistic travel case that's transparent, but it's two-sided. So on one side, you can keep some things that you know you will need while you're on the flight. And then on the other side, you can store your essentials that you'll need once you get to your destination. So it's a piece that I'm really excited to add to my collection at some point, pretty much as soon as I have a chance to travel somewhere because I find it to be just really well organized, it's quite simplistic, and it's also not going to break the bank. I think it's really fairly priced, but it's a piece that I'm oddly excited about because I love things that help me stay organized. Item number four is one that I'm considering picking up, but I'm not yet convinced whether I should be buying it or not because I just really don't know if I need it. But it's the new Sunset CDC metal cup, which I actually got to have a look at during an RMS party, which I actually vlogged for you guys, so I'll have it linked up here. But it's a piece that's made of metal. It's quite innovative because this is the first time that RMS was able to put color to metal. And you guys know that I'm a huge fan of the CDC collection from Hermes. However, I have to admit that the pieces that I do have, and I have quite a few CDC bracelets, I just simply don't wear anymore, so I don't know if I would really take advantage of that piece if I picked it up. It's not too expensive, especially if you compare it to the leather version of the CDC bracelet. The price of the Sunset Cup in the US is $670, so if you compare it to the $1000 price, which is the starting price of the CDC bracelet, it's not too terrible, but at the same time as you guys know, I'm not a huge advocate for custom jewelry. I much rather spend my money on fine jewelry. And trust me, I have some great recommendations when it comes to fine jewelry in this video. But I find it to be quite a fun and cool and youthful look. And if you watch my vlog, then you already know that the new cuffs are available in a bunch of different colors. Each color was actually inspired by the California sunset. Obviously, I would go for the black one, but in case you're trying to spice up your collection, the different colors are also available. And based on the pictures that I have seen and when I got to have a look at them in person at the event, every single color looks really saturated. And if it's true what they say that they don't tarnish and they don't chip and they don't change color over time, they perhaps might be a good accessory to have in your collection. The next few pieces that I would love to add to my collection at some point are actually from a company that you might have not heard of. And the brand is called Foundry Jewelry. And if you've never heard of Foundry, then you have to go and check them out on Instagram because they are a brand that has a very unique, eclectic, yet sophisticated aesthetic. The first time I saw their pieces, I wasn't actually sure if they were vintage or if they were brand new or what was the whole thing about the brand. Every design that I have seen almost looked like a family heirloom that you've had in your family for generations and it got passed down to you because each piece is just so intricately done. There is just so much attention to the details and the meaning behind each one of their designs. Every single one of them has a spiritual meaning or a story behind it, which I really appreciate. Everything about the brand is just so incredibly customized from the jewelry and the designs all the way to the actual experience. I actually had a chance to visit their flagship store, I believe towards the end of the year last year. Funny enough, I was looking for a Christmas gift for myself and I actually got to meet the owner and founder of the brand who was absolutely incredible and so inspirational. And I completely fell in love with the brand and the entire experience. I picked out a couple of pieces that I was interested in and I was going back and forth whether I should buy them or not and I ended up coming home. I was gonna go back the next day but I ended up finding something else from our mess which you know how it works with our mess. Once you have something, if you pass off on it, you don't know when it will come back around again. So I ended up passing off on Foundry instead. Well, I wouldn't say that I regret not picking up those pieces because I'm really happy with what I got from our mess. I still think about the pieces that I saw almost six months ago at this point, and I still think about them from time to time, which I think is a good indicator that they are something that I would really appreciate and value in my collection. They make pretty much everything that you would consider fine jewelry from rings through bracelets and earrings to necklaces. And my favorite thing that they make are necklaces. So I would love to add a necklace to my collection. And as I mentioned, the entire experience is completely customized. So you choose your chain, you choose the closure that you want on the chain, you choose the different extensions that you can attach pendants to. You can choose pendants from each one of their ranges and each one of them has a different inspiration and meaning behind it. And I absolutely love how much thought goes into the making and even the inspiration of each piece. 
And in case you're interested, but two collections I love the most. I really, really like their diamond initials because they use a mix of different cut diamonds on each one of their initials. So you're getting a little bit of emerald cut diamonds, you're getting a little bit of round cut diamonds, which I think is quite interesting and it's something that I haven't really seen before. And my second favorite would have to be their crescent designs. I just find them to be quite mystical and I really like their use of enamel with the diamonds. So those are probably my two favorites if I would have to choose out of everything that they have. But quite honestly, they don't really make anything that I don't like. So if you're tired of seeing the same Van Cleef necklaces and car key bracelets that everyone seems to have on social media, and you're looking for something a little bit more unique and one of a kind, I would highly recommend that you check out Fandre because I have a special place in my heart for the brand. I just really appreciate how much effort and thought goes into the making of each one of their designs. So I'm really excited to start building my necklace with them at some point. And as I mentioned, the two collections that I'll be looking at are the Diamond Initial and one of their Crescent Medallions. And last but not least, let's talk about bags. I do actually have quite a few bags from Hermes on my wish list, which I think would deserve their own dedicated video. So if you guys would like to see that from me, then please give this video a thumbs up. It wouldn't really be an annual wish list. It would be more like a long-term plan or strategy of bags that I would like to pick up from the brand down the line because obviously they're a brand that's quite unpredictable so you never know when you get what but I would be more than happy to share some bags that I'm interested in but I thought that I would at least share one bag that I would be thrilled to add to my collection and I don't think you guys would be able to guess what it is because it's quite I wouldn't say underrated bag, but not many people I think would find it exciting. But the very next bag that I would be real to add to my collection would be a Constance 18 in Epsom. I actually do not own a Constance in size 18, so it would be the very first size and style in my collection, which I'm kind of excited for. I was never the biggest fan of the Constance. It took quite a while for it to grow on me, but for the past couple of months, it's been pretty much the only bag that I ever think about or lost after. So I guess we'll have to see if I get lucky enough to be offered a Constance 18 this year because obviously it's the smaller size. It's not the smallest but the smaller size which means that it's more popular and I'm very specific with what bag I would like. I would only take it if it was in Epsom with gold or rose gold hardware. Would I consider it in palladium? Maybe, but I would definitely prefer either gold or rose gold and only Epsom. And I don't even think I would be interested in an exotic piece because at this point, I don't like the Constance enough to invest so much money into a lizard or an alligator piece. I have really only been wearing my mini Kelly's for the past couple of months. I haven't really been pulling out any other bags since I haven't really been leaving my apartment. So I think it would be a nice addition to my collection because I find the Constance 18 to be quite similar to the Mini Kelly, at least the way I wear them. So I'll be sure to keep you guys posted, and trust me, you'll be the first to know when and if I'm able to pick up a Constance 18. And this is it guys, this completes my video on my 2020 luxury wish list. If you guys would like me to make a video specifically on what Hermes bags I would love to add to my collection down the line, then please make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching, I appreciate you being here, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.